Welcome back to the KDLT Sports Extra Points video blog. He's Sports Director Mark Ovenden, also of Calling All Sports. I'm weekend sports anchor Zach Borg. We were here a couple weeks ago at the start of Vikings training camp talking Vikings football, and now we kind of get to have a little more fun because we're talking with our local teams. Uh, it was media day for both SDSU and USD this past week. They've been practicing now for about a week. Kind of two programs that have been on different uh, spectrums here the last couple of years. Much, yeah. Um, State's had great success. They've made the playoffs several times now, so they're not newcomers to that. They get a lot of respect in the national polls. They're 15th in one poll, 16th in another poll, which puts them down in the middle of the pack in the Missouri Valley. There's six teams in the Missouri Valley in the top 20, uh, which is Coming off a five-team year in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, which is, and two in the championship game, yeah. for that matter. Um, <clears throat> but I... I the fact that they lost Zach Zenner, Austin Sumner, and Jason Schneider cer certainly hurts them, Zenner in particular, but they've always had good running backs at South Dakota State. They've always had good running backs. They, and, and, and part of the key to that is not just the fact that they've had good running backs, but they've always had a good line. John Stigelmeyer has uh, emphasized that over the years, and I think you'll find that no matter who the running back happens to be, I, I think they'll be, they'll be okay. They're not going to be as good as they were with Zach Center, I don't think, but nobody knew who Zach Center was when he started playing either. So you, you never know. And I know the one thing from some of the guys you talked to up in Brookings is I, I think a lot of players are looking at this now as a – they're not glad their those turn. guys are gone, yeah. but it's their turn, it's their opportunity, and they're excited to get a chance to prove what they can do wearing the, the blue and yellow of the Jackrabbits. It's funny you talk about Zach Center being gone because it looked like he was still there with his little brother Sam who's – Probably not going to see him the field this year. He's a freshman running back, but looks almost exactly like him. Um, you said one guy, I, probably going to be a committee of guys because they have a couple of guys. Uh, Gandy, I know, was a really good backup. He kind of got hurt last year. Mingarelli, who even kind of touched on this with me, he's one of those guys that was kind of a walk-on and suddenly kind of burst onto the scene, which they've had a they've had some good luck with really kind of bringing in these walk-ons who can uh, make a contribution down the stretch. Quarterback is the thing that you know, last year we all hated seeing Austin Sumner go down, uh, but we, I think we even mentioned it a year ago. We thought maybe one of the benefits of this is, well, at least they're going to get a look at a guy for next year. Zach Lujan, I think he was just named captain today, actually. That's true. Goes in as the starting quarterback. There's also a, a young gun by the name of Taron Christian, who we're familiar with, who could be the future there. Well, Taron does so many different things. I, You know, Z Zach got in and played quite a bit last year, which is which is really good. It's, like you said, unfortunate that Austin got hurt. Uh, but Taron Christian's a guy that can do so many things on the football field athletically, and he's going to be a quarterback. It's not like they're going to take yeah. him and move him to, you know, a, a wide receiver or whatever. He's going to be a quarterback. I, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him see the field a little bit this year. Yeah, Stig and, didn't and rule it out. if he does well, it might be a lot. Who knows? Stig didn't rule it out. I mean, I know he's not exactly one to play freshman, but I asked him that today, and he didn't say no. So no. it's a possibility. And obviously you got Jake Winnicky, so that maybe softens the impact of losing a Jason Schneider. If they're going to get back to the playoffs, I think it's going to be maybe more of a defensive team because they got eight starters back on that side. I would agree. Um, I think everybody automatically thinks Jake Winnicky's just going to have this monster year now that – no, he's not. Yeah, he did have uh, some help. He, he, the defenses are going to be able to key on him. They'll double team him, whereas Zach Zenner was the focal point last year. And maybe even Schneider. And he had Schneider to help yeah. out too. So, I mean, he's a tremendous player and a great weapon, but now the defenses are going to be able to go, well, we don't have th three guys to worry about. we got one guy to worry about until somebody else comes along and proves them wrong. I'll say the one thing, too, for a team that's kind of starting over, they open with Kansas, by the way, who that – you know, if it was last year's team, I would think they could go in to beat Kansas because Kansas has a new head coach. They've had a lot of turnover, and that's kind of when you see typically a lot of these FCS teams going and beating FBS. But the rest of their schedule, it's obviously tough being in the Valley, but all the other playoff teams from last year are going to be at the new look Coughlin Alumni Stadium. NDSU, Illinois State, Indiana State, you and I all have to come here. Which helps. So that could definitely be a help for a team that's kind of starting over a little bit. Yeah. Well, USD, on the other hand, um, I don't know what to say at this point because we thought they'd maybe kind of turned, were going to turn the corner last year after they'd come off that 4-8 and eight season. 
even though it was four and eight, they'd beaten you and I. They were close in a lot of games. Injuries once again have just been the killer for that program yeah. the last couple of years. But we heard the same things in media day. We're we're going to finish this year. I mean, we've been hearing this for three years now. Is, is this? How are they going to get over the hump? Well, you know, staying healthy is a big key, and it's it, it's not because of lack of depth. Certainly, they don't have the depth that SDSU has. Maybe. NDSU has or SDSU, but. They've got good players, but the last two years they've ended up with a non-running back <laughs> playing running back at the end of the year. Back, and and yeah. that just, you're not going to win games with that, especially when, like, you know, Bauma could be one of the premier backs in the league if he could stay healthy. He's a good player. He runs hard. Um, they've got a couple of wide receivers that can really go. that can scoot down the field and catch the ball. Uh, Kevin Earl's gone. I, I, I look at quarterback as a, as a question mark for them personally. Um, I, I know Joe feels like he's got, you know, Sager's going to be the starting quarterback, but he also feels like he's got a freshman that might be the best kid quarterback he's recruited. So, yeah. but you don't win with a freshman at quarterback generally. Yeah. So, I, I, I personally, I think health is going to be the biggest key to how well they do. they got a great kicker, which if you're in close games is, is huge. They weren't in that many close games last year, yeah. so it didn't matter as much, but... Hopefully, um, I mean, I always, I always want all of our teams to win. I really would like to see Joe Glenn's team have he, a good year. He said year. it too. They're due. He's an awesome guy. I mean, he stays up when I'm not sure many other people could. I mean, he, you know, you call his cell phone. Um, although his carrier, um, <laughs> up until a couple of days ago, you'd call his cell phone and you'd hear. Um, the Beach Boys song, and as you know, <laughs> fight, 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 and, and, and that's not on there anymore. So maybe that's a good omen that that's not mm. on there anymore. Changing but, uh, up. You know, the day that Joe was hired, he got up and at the press conference and sang the fight song for USD. And he, you know, he loves the school. He's passionate. He's. Uh, I just like to see them have success for his sake, and also the players that have suffered under some, a couple of rotten years. You know sense of urgency this year too i mean it is his fourth year and you know he's getting up there in years i mean you have to wonder too how much long i mean cause well, he, he really did to that effect last year it really i've never seen i've dealt with him too when he was at wyoming it really took a toll on him last yeah. year toward the end well the day it the day it truly isn't fun anymore is the, the day that i'm sure joe will step aside and let somebody else take over but i still i know he still has a lot of expectations for this year's team, and it feels he does. He feels like they're due, they're due to have some good fortune, and I agree with him there. Last thing I'll point I'll make for the players too defensively, I think they could be. They're pretty good two years ago. Of course, they had Tyler Starr, but Drew Innings and Kean Loggy were both South Dakota kids. Right. They are. They look huge. Those look like those could be two. I'm not saying they're going to be Tyler Stars, but they look like they well, could really be impact Joe guys. Joe was on the radio team. with me the, the other day, and he mentioned Innings as being a potential guy they could play on Sundays. I believe it. He's he's just massive right now, even compared to what he was two years ago. Right. Uh, their schedule, ironically, they're also going to be in Kansas at Kansas State. It's not quite Oregon, but K-State's getting votes as well. I'd so. rather be playing Kansas than Kansas State. Yeah. And then the rest Every of it. Every year. Yeah, the rest of USD's schedule, obviously it's pretty much the same as what yeah. uh, they get Drake at home, so hopefully that's going to be a, an easy win for their home opener. But, you know, the fun thing, I, and I mentioned this, I know Joe's mentioned what happened when he was at Montana when he was a coordinator. They were picked last. They ended up winning the Big Sky in a year where they still, and that was back when it had Boise and, and Nevada and all these teams that are now FBS. You look at Indiana State a year ago. They were picked yeah. last. They Not only did they get in the playoffs, they got in with five losses. So it, it's not even that you have to go ten and two or nine and three. If you play well in this conference, you've got a shot. Yeah, it's uh, a tough conference, but yeah, you're right. A, a winning record would be huge for USD this year. And of course, they'll meet. Uh, I believe it's around November fifteenth. It's right around the. Uh, it's the same week of the state football championships, so they'll be down at the Dakota Dome this year. Of course, SDSU's won all three. That's a long way off. And once again, we'll say what we said last year. Hopefully, both of them are contending for a playoff berth because as much as the last as much as last year's USD SDSU game was a blowout which kind of lent to the way that season had gone the game two year, the game in 2013 at the dome was actually pretty good that was i think it was like 27 to 12 yeah. but it was close going to the fourth so right. 
Well, that'll do it for our preview for SDSU and USD, but we've still got more college football to come. We've got the uh, Division II teams are going to start doing their media days here within the week. Same for the NAI. We'll get to previewing those teams. And then, of course, uh, the high school, it's... It's only about a, it's actually only a week from Saturday for the Minnesota, Minnesota schools teams. start up on the twenty uh, first or second whatever that Saturday is twenty second I think it is yeah yeah and we've also and we're two weeks out from obviously the Iowa and the South Dakota schools starting so we'll get into that twenty eighth uh, of, of August is when our first f football Friday will be yeah we've got the date down and uh, before we go congratulations uh, and I don't know if we got to the last time but McCook Minor won the uh, Legion B title and then the A title went to Rapid City Post 22, although Yankton gave him a, a great run. So, And, of course, the amateur tournament's still going on, so uh, get out to Mitchell this week. It's been a lot of good baseball out there. Yeah, I love the amateur tournament. Also, Megan Mingo won the women's uh, state title in golf. Uh, the Yankton native did, and she plays for South Dakota State now. She's had a great summer. Yep. And Tommy but Vining. not as great as Tommy Vining's. He won both the match and medal play tournaments. He becomes just the fifth golfer in South Dakota history to win both of those in a calendar year. Some pretty good names uh, have done that before him. Paul Schock, um, Kurt Byram, <laughs> um, Ryan Jansa, and Dave Hanton. And uh, those are like Hall of Fame golfers in South Dakota. So that's a uh, great company for Tom Vining who's headed up to uh, University of Minnesota to play for the Gophers. and. He, and he's also playing in the U.S. Amateur next week. So. so good luck to him. Good luck to everybody. And thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you again next week.